Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. Want to improve your organization's customer service? Looking for insider tips to knock your customer socks off? Then you're in the right place. Here's your host, Yannick Grant. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, we have with us a gentleman by the name of Vance Morris. Now, Vance is a character that I am very intrigued to interview because from reading his media sheet, there are a lot of interesting things that I know he's going to share with us that you as our audience will be very, very enticed to hear. So let me give you a brief introduction about Vance and then we get right into speaking with him. Vance spent 10 years working for the mouse at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. He started his career at Disney on the opening team of the Yacht and Beach Club Resorts and progressed throughout the management ranks as a nightclub manager at Pleasure Island, service trainer aboard the Empress Lily, and on the revitalization team of the Contemporary Resort in the mid-90s. It was the Contemporary that Vance got his crowning achievement, designing, opening, and operating Chef Mickey's, Disney's flagship character dining experience. He is also the author of business book, The Seven Rules for Prosperity in Any Economy, and the forthcoming book, Systematic Magic. Vance is the owner of Chem Dry on the Shore, an Eastern Shore cleaning company, and he is also the founder of Deliver Service Now, a Disney service and marketing consulting business. So I am very excited to speak with Vance, and I would like our audience, you know, I'm sure they're excited as well. So we're going to just welcome you, Vance, and we really appreciate you taking this time to speak with us. So good afternoon. How are you? I am fantastic, Yannick. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Awesome. Okay, so could you share with us a little bit about your experience at Disney and, you know, just a little bit of your journey, who you are? Sure. Actually, I started my management career at Disney. Fantastic place to learn to be a manager, especially from a customer service point of view and a process point of view. Disney has a process for everything. And certainly one of the ways that I like to learn and I like to teach my clients now is to create a process around whatever it is that you want to get done. And then you can tweak it, but you have to have a process in place. I spent a lot of time at the Contemporary Resort, designed a restaurant called Chef Mickey's, which was the flagship character dining experience where we had to get Mickey Mouse to see 400 guests in the course of probably about 45 minutes. And it had to be a phenomenal experience. That was our charge. So an average table for two at our restaurant stayed with us for about 43 to 45 minutes. So Mickey Mouse had to be able to see, and we had 400 seats in the restaurant. So Mickey Mouse had to be able to go and see all 400 people within about a 43 minute period. Not a lot of time to get Mickey Mouse through, but we managed to do it with cooperation of all the departments. I've spent a lot of time in hotels and restaurants. I've worked in retirement communities, which was really just like working at a big resort, just with a lot of old people around. (laughs) And, you know, I've gone out on my own. You know, I had a couple of layoffs in my career, not very happy about them. But, you know, I had gotten tired of being laid off and wanted to have my own business because I figure I'm not going to fire myself and had to really look for a business that had a great product that I could use my service experience and my management. Disney experience and be able to put together just a rockin' kick butt business in my area. And so I looked at a lot of different businesses. Don't ask me why I picked carpet cleaning. I could barely vacuum before I started doing this. So, <laughs> but I can certainly clean now. My wife still kids me that, you know, we don't clean our carpet as often as we should, but especially since we own a company that does that. The guys are always out busy working on the road. So, you know, if I take somebody off the road to clean the house, it means that we're, you know, taking a little revenue out of the pocket. But the key thing, you know, with that was I found a great franchise to work with, which is ChemDry, which you mentioned in the introduction. And the reason I looked for that is because I knew that they had systems and processes in place already. They already had, you know, a framework that I could work from and then be able to take that framework and add to it what makes me special and put that stuff into my business and really create just a complete service powerhouse. I'm happy to be known for being a great carpet cleaner, but I'd rather be known as providing just a 
phenomenal service experience through my business. You know, it's funny you say that you want to create a phenomenal service experience through your business, because when people typically think, I think, of carpet cleaning, service experience and carpet cleaning don't necessarily go hand in hand, true or false? You are absolutely correct. Carpet cleaners have a very bad reputation, at least in the United States. One of the things I want to emphasize that, you know, that I learned early on in my career is everybody is in the service business. And I think it was one of the leaders over by Southwest Airlines that said she's actually in the service business that just happens to provide transportation services, you know, as an airline. Exactly. So I guess it's the same same principle you'd apply to your business. You are actually exactly. in the service business just providing carpet cleaning services to your customers, right? You are absolutely correct. So on that note, how do you create an experience out of the mundane and ordinary, you know, carpet cleaning? Like what are some of the things that you do in your business that makes it a wow experience? First and foremost, we have to get into the client's home in order to provide our service. And, you know, going up to the door, parking the van, knocking on the door, you know, that's a very mundane, very boring, you know, thing that it has to be done, but it's just part of the job. One of the things that we do to create a, an experience out of that is, well, first and foremost, our technicians are all in pressed uniforms that are clean and they always carry an extra clean uniform with them in the van so that in case they get soiled on their first job, they're looking good for their second job. We have a special rug that we put down on the front mat for us to wipe our feet. We always knock on the door. We never ring. You know, salespeople ring the bell, friends knock. And then we always ask, you know, may we come in? You know, you know, my name is Steven. I'm here to take care of your carpet today. May I come in? You can't just assume that they're going to let you into the front. The other thing we do is we approach with a gift. And I guarantee you none of my competitors are doing this. And this is a nice tidbit for your listeners. We provide a housewarming gift when we arrive at the home. It's nothing, you know, tremendous. It's a, a small bottle of our spot remover, a little bag of cookies and a nice note from me, the owner, saying thank you very much for allowing us into your home. That's really sets the tone for how the entire experience is going to go. It also sets the tone for us to have what's called reciprocity. And we want to make sure that, you know, when we're in doing our sales presentation, that, you know, the client now feels we've given them something, they feel compelled to give us something back. So I think that not only giving the gift, which, you know, if you go to anybody's home and you're going to a party, you're going to bring a gift, a bottle of wine, an hors d'oeuvre or an appetizer. So when we go to someone's home, we don't go empty handed either. Right. You know, that is such a powerful message because I think even growing up, maybe not in my era at least, but I've heard my parents say that like in their era, it's principle that when you go to someone's house, as you said, maybe for dinner or they invite you over for an event, that you bring some form of gift, you know, as a contribution or an appreciation for being invited. So you've actually taken that same, you know, mom and pop kind of engagement that you would engage like with your neighbor or persons in your community into your business to build on the relationship with your customers. Yep. It immediately separates us from not only from my competitors, but it also separates us from every other service business out there that would be coming to the home. You know, an electrician, a plumber, television repair. You know, I guarantee that, you know, one, they're not bringing a gift. And two, you know, there's little likelihood that they're wearing booties in the house or, you know, they bring a special mat to wipe their feet before they come in. You know, I had a plumber had to do some work in our house and, you know, he showed up in muddy work boots. And I said, you know, you're not walking in my house with those things. I'm either put on some boot, you know, I had booties, so I said, Here, you can wear booties or you can go barefoot, your preference. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. So, we spoke a little bit about how you turn the mundane and the ordinary into extraordinary. In terms of the customer's emotions and getting an idea of your customer's needs, wants, the stereotyping, the emotions of your ideal customer. How is it that you break that down in your business per se? What are your customers' specific needs? For example, when we do customer service training, there are two needs that we break down, the emotional and the intellectual. Do you take that same approach in your business? A little bit. I separate it out a little bit more. You know, what they need, you know, if you look at it as a compass, north, south, east, and west, and needs, stereotypes, emotions, you know, what they need is carpet cleaning. That's bare basic bottom line you know, that's what they've got. That's what they want. What they want is a carpet cleaning done at, you know, a fair price to have an excellent job done. Some of the emotions that they're going through are, you know, is this going to be a good experience for me? Am I actually going to get, you know, a bait and switch? Is there going to be a 
some kind of flim flam going on, you know, because again, our carpet cleaners don't have a great reputation, you know, and then the stereotypes, you know, of our business, and it could be negative or positive stereotypes. You know, if you look at an auto dealer, you know, if somebody is looking to buy, say, a high performance car, you know, their need would be a car, their want would be a sports car. You know, some of the emotions are going through would be, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, being able to have a, a vehicle that looks just like, you know, their next door neighbors. You know, a negative emotion might be buyer's remorse. Did they really have to buy this, you know, higher performance car or could they have gotten by with something different? Mm -hmm. And then they have certain stereotypes of, you know, how the car dealership should be. You know, the uniforms that the technicians wear to how the showroom is supposed to look. And it can be negative or positive stereotypes. Right. So there are a lot of things that you definitely take into consideration in your own business. Disney is a company that... I think globally, a lot of companies look up to Disney. I mean, I know they have the Disney Institute where people actually go there for further training from a theoretical as well as a practical point of view as to how they can implement some of the pillars of success that Disney have used into their own businesses. Is there anything, maybe three things that you learned from your experience interacting and working with Disney brand that you have taken into your own business? Well, certainly. There's more than three, but we don't have time for that. (laughs) But certainly, you know, the first, I think, is, you know, is attention to detail. You know, and that's one of the huge keys. You'll look at certain things at Disney where they paint a specific fence every night of the week, you know, just to make sure it looks perfect for the opening of the next day. And really, you know, just the focus of all those details. If you go to one of the restaurants at Disney, it's called Be Our Guest Restaurant. And Beauty and the Beast are the two main characters that are touring around the restaurant. If you look up at the ceiling, they have little cornices that could have easily been left at as, you know, little plain white cornices, you know, little decorative molding pieces. But each one of them is carved like Beast's head. It could have been just a little customary circle or rosette, but why do they do it? I mean, 70, 80 percent, maybe even 90 percent of the visitors hardly ever look up at the ceiling. I mean, when was the last time you were in a restaurant and you looked at the ceiling? You know, it's not really something that's done. It's done for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it's done for those 10 percent who do look up and who do get it. You know, and those are probably that 10 percent is probably the most valuable, most committed customer. And those details matter to them. You know, and we also you know want to educate our customer about the level of details that we go through. Disney does that wonderfully. They have a newsletter. It's called D23, which is a fantastic magazine to get. It's all of, I think, $70 a year or something like that. But it's a great behind the scenes, how they do things, you know, whether it be with the movies or whether it be with the theme parks or the resorts. You know, it's a great magazine. I do a similar newsletter, you know, not to the extent that Disney does, but I do a newsletter to my clients and I outline all of the things that we do for them because I think it's very important that you educate your clients and educate your customers, especially when it comes to the details that you're providing. And then also, you know, I think Walt even said it, Walt Disney said it once, says, even if I'm the only one that notices some things are still worth doing because I need to be prideful to be motivated. I'm paraphrasing, but I think I'm pretty close. That's the same thing with me is, you know, I take a lot of pride in my business and the way things look and the way my employees interact with our clients. Even if I'm the only one that notices those details, they're still important enough to do. Excellent. And I think the other thing, you know, that I really took from Disney is having, you know, a set of service standards, you know, things that are cut in stone that, you know, there's no questioning it, they're immovable. And, you know, it's the guiding principle for everything that either happens in my business or the guiding principles that happened at Disney. You know, Disney only has four that have been with them for 50 years now, and they are safety, courtesy, show and efficiency. Those are the four guiding service standards that they have. And, you know, and I've taken that, you know, 100% into my business. And, you know, the show is very important, but, you know, the safety of my employees and the safety of my guests is even more important. So I think having a set of service standards is vital to any business. Wow. So you said safety, courtesy, show, and what was the fourth one? 
efficiency, efficiency. which is a nice way of saying profit, profitability. <laughs> yes, because we all go into business to make money, right? You know, Disney is a profit generating company. A lot of people forget that. They have shareholders, so they have to turn a profit. But, you know, what they call themselves is, you know, we are a profitable storytelling company. But profit is in the list of the hierarchy of those four service standards. Profitability is last. Number one is safety. Number two is courtesy. Courtesy is taught from day one. And, you know, those things are in place, you know, because if those things are in place, profitability is going to take care of itself. True. That is true. Because, you know, it's interesting that you said that because my daughter is 10 now. And when she was five, we took her to Disney for the first time. And I have a really bad experience with ice cream cones, you know, from Jamaica. That's where I'm from. And... (laughs) She got an ice cream cone and the scoops fell off the cone. You know, sometimes they pack it on too much so it falls off. Oh, sure. And there was a guy that was like blowing the lawn and he saw what happened and he went to the nearest stall and got her a new ice cream cone and brought it over and gave her. And she was in tears. She was crying. She was like, it's gone. All the ice cream is gone. And, you know, he just came and he took control. He was clearly he was empowered and he yes. was able to effect, you know, that empowerment right there and then when it was really needed and then you know it was just like one second she was crying and the next second the tears stopped and she was a happy child again and to me that was just the epitome of what you explained a while ago of courtesy you know just being observant of what's happening around you yes you're employed to ensure the grounds are clean and you know there are no leaves hanging around that kind of stuff but at the same time you're also observant of your environment to make sure that your customers are happy Right. Well, and, you know, and customer service is not a department, you know, at least in the service world and the L and resorts, especially at Disney, you know, customer service is everybody's job. And very easily, you know, your leaf blowing friend there, you know, could have certainly turned his head and ignored it and said, that's not my job. But that's not the way Disney has trained its employees. Mm -hmm. And, you know, giving that personal touch, using friendly phrases, Disney likes to call it being aggressively friendly. And certainly your leaf blower friend was being aggressively friendly. He saw a problem and immediately took action on it. And, you know, that's one of the great things that, you know, Disney does empower, you know, line employees to take care of it. Why get a manager for something like that? Just take care of it and make it done. True. Very true. So you pointed out to us two of the pillars that you've taken over in your business is attention to detail and service standards. Is there a third one that you've taken over in your business that you could think of? Well, certainly the process, you know, so I mean, I have a process for everything (laughs) that we do, very similar to Disney. And you have to, I mean, you know, the thing about Disney has at the moment over 75,000 employees. And in order to have those 75,000 employees provide a seamless, exciting and memorable experience to millions and millions of people, 365 days a year, you've got to have a systematic process to avoid utter chaos that would certainly ensue, you know, so there are processes. Processes for every little thing at Disney, you know, from putting air in the bus tires to how many lanes are needed at the entrance to the park. You know, there's a step by step exacting procedure for each. And, you know, a lot of those processes come from the hourly employees. You know, it's not just managers or executives coming up with these things. It's the hourly employees that are on the ground, you know, doing these jobs day in and day out, providing how best to serve the guests. And then they become incorporated into the overall systematic process. And I take the same thing with my business now. If one of our technicians or customer service people, you know, feels that, you know, we could be doing something better or something different. We are all ears and let's see how we can do it. Yeah, I think that's so powerful. Another show that I really pay attention to over the years is Undercover Boss that comes on on CBS. And oh, I love that show. <laughs> everybody does. And one of the things that really has come out to me out of that show is it really shows you as a business owner that it's the persons that are actually, as you said, that are on the ground, that are dealing with the customers every day. They're the ones, when they give you a solution or a suggestion for improvement of a process or to make something more efficient, you should really take heed because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are getting the raw feedback from your customers in terms of what they want. Exactly. Yeah, You're that, so correct. That is truly powerful. Awesome. So... How is it that you stay motivated every day, Vance? You know, you just sound so energetic and enthusiastic and passionate about what you're doing. How do you manage to stay motivated every day? 
Well, it's something that I enjoy doing. So, I mean, if I certainly I didn't enjoy it, it wouldn't come out in my voice. It certainly would not, you know, come out in my everyday work. Right. It's just something I feel that, you know, especially in the United States and somewhat in the UK a bit, you know, customer service is really, it's just, it's gone. You know, there's just so many stories but from the airlines to, you know, to the hardware store where, you know, there are just such horrible customer service stories. And really, I've put my business, my consulting business into, you know, eradicating that decimation of the service business. You know, if I got to do it one company at a time, we do it one company at a time. But it's exciting because I get to see a smile on people's face, especially the boss when something goes, you know, like we planned out. You know, it's really exciting. The other thing that keeps me going is I, I have four kids. So they keep me on my toes. And I, also everything I'm doing, you know, I'm doing, you know, for them. So I, I got to stay current and stay energetic just to keep up with them. Awesome. Awesome. That sounds really good. So you touched on something a while ago. You stated that you think customer service is pretty much shot in the United States and in the UK. To be honest with you, in Jamaica, which is where I'm from, it's pretty much shot here too. And that's one of the things that motivated me to want to start this business in the first place, because it's something that is a great pet peeve of mine. And I think that it's not rocket science that it takes. It really just takes a little bit of effort and honest interest on your part to just show someone else some genuine courtesy and concern, especially if you're being paid to offer that service. So could you share with us maybe what do you think are some of the fundamental things that are lacking either from a cultural perspective or a personal perspective globally, why you think customer service is not as good as it should be? Well, I think a lot of people have you know, abdicated their authority or abdicated their management of customer service. You know, a great example, I was at a home improvement store. Trust me, I am by no means a handy person around the house, but I had to pick up some items at a local home improvement store. And I watched as the cashier checked out the people in front of me without saying one word to them. No good morning. No, did you find everything okay? You know, didn't even explain the price to the person. Didn't even quote the price. Just, you know, looked at the monitor on the register and, you know, expected either a credit card or some cash to exchange. And I said, well, this is crazy. And the manager was standing not one register away, just leaning up against a pole. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to be the first one to speak. I'm going to do a little test and do a little experiment here and see what happens. And when I got up to the register, you know, again, no good morning. You know, sir, did you find everything okay? You know, do you know how to use this particular tool? Any number of things could have been said that would have made it a pleasant experience. I wasn't even looking for a wow experience. I was just looking for, you know, pleasant, get me through it kind of thing. And have you ever done the exercise where you have to sit quietly for one minute in a group of people and you know how painful that one minute of silence can be? Mm -hmm. Well, just imagine, I mean, I was there for a minute and 45 seconds at this register with nothing being said. It was extremely painful and very awkward as well. But I refused to be the first one to say something. It's just been allowed to degrade. You know, I call it an insidious decline because, you know, insidious is just small, incremental, little, you know, lapses that occur that over time end up being something extremely large. And that's what, you know, I manage and that's what Disney manages. You know, we overmanage those details and, you know, some businesses don't manage them at all. I think that's really where a lot of the downfall has happened is, you know, businesses have been too focused on profitability cost cutting and things like that. And, you know, they've forgotten about, you know, or they've created a department called customer service when in fact it should be everybody's job. That is so true. You know, it's like from what I got from what you said, it's like the obvious is no longer obvious anymore. No, it's, you know, treat others as you wish to be treated. You know, the golden rule, you know, seems to have gone out the window. Wow. Okay, so what are some of the things that you would recommend as a leader in a business? Three main things that if you want to really set yourself apart from your competition in customer experience and creating that service, that culture of service where you're not forcing the culture on people, but people genuinely buy into the vision and mission and what the company is about. And of course, their values are congruent with the values of the company. What do you think as a leader are some of the things that they would need to be looking out for specifically? Three things. I think certainly, you know, in your hiring process, you know, I hire for attitude and personality and, you know, a desire for them to want to really help people and serve people. So I think that, you know, the best candidate always is not the most technically 
you know, advanced candidate. I can teach all of the items, whether it be how, how to carry a tray in a restaurant or how to clean a carpet. I can teach all of that. But a lot of things I can't teach are, you know, like how to be nice to somebody. you got to bring some certain things to the table that are, you know, personality traits that I would look for. And I think that a lot of what is important is ongoing training and through role playing. And, you know, I, we constantly do that, especially when we have complaints that come through. You know, we don't get many, you know, but I get comment cards on all of our clients. And if any client, you know, has rated us less than a four out of a five point scale, you know, I'm having that discussion with the employee and saying, hey, you know, what happened here? And then we'll role play on, you know, how could this have been handled better? And how could the outcome have been a more positive one, not only for the client, but for the employee? And I think finally, you know, a lot of us don't have what we call HR departments, small businesses, you know, especially mine. I mean, you know, I'm a very small business. I don't have a HR or a training department. And I think, you know, one of the things that I have to constantly do is educate myself. And I think that's what a lot of small business people forget to do is to educate themselves. So, I mean, I'm constantly, you know, on webinars or reading books, you know, not only about customer service and customer experience, but, you know, biographies of business owners and, you know, other business books to keep myself, you know, fresh with ideas, but also to see what other folks are doing out there. And if I can take an idea from one of these books and implement it in in my business, then, you know, the investment in the book has been well worth it. That is true. Wow. That's powerful. So as you said, the first one is they need to train their staff. They need to mm -hmm. ensure that they engage with their team members and connect with them. And the hiring process is very critical for that. So you hire for attitude because you can train on everything else, but attitude is something that's driven from within. And then finally, you said you always focus on the development of the employee, right? Certainly. Exactly. And the education, education of, the of, the, of the owner. Definitely. Because he needs to grow and in his growth and development, it will hopefully transfer into the team members as well. Definitely. And I think that, you know, a lot of business owners are very leery about finding a coach. You know, I highly recommend, you know, having a business coach or a personal coach to work with you. Actually, I have three different coaches, if you include my trainer at the gym, because, you know, they know what they're doing and they keep me on my toes. So, I, you know, I have a business coach, I have a personal coach and I have a gym coach between the three of them keep me motivated and keep me moving. Very true. That's awesome. Okay. So Vance, could you share with us what is one online resource, tool, website, or app that you couldn't live without in your business? You know, I knew you were going to ask that question and there are just so many. <laughs> I think, you know, one website that I recommend everybody, especially small business owners, is a website called gkic.com, which is a small business and entrepreneurial organization. They've got some fantastic resources, both free and paid, but there's enough free resources to keep you busy for a number of years. And I certainly get a lot of my marketing and customer service information from them and ideas from them. You know, I couldn't live without my calendar. And certainly I am a very old school calendar kind of guy, but I script my day completely. So, you know, typically Wednesdays is the day that I do phone calls. Obviously, I'm doing one right now. I try and stack all of my phone calls onto one day so that I can use the other days of the week, you know, fairly uninterrupted and get as much done and be as impactful and get as much work done as I possibly can in a short period of time. Yeah, wow. Okay, so that's GKIC, you indicated one tool you use and your calendar as a second one, yeah. right? Could you name for us maybe two books that have had the biggest impact on you, both from a professional perspective as well as a personal perspective? Sure. The one book that I certainly would recommend from a service perspective, if you haven't gotten it, is called Be Our Guest. Disney actually published that book. Phenomenal, phenomenal how to make your business more like Disney if you wanted to copy them. Just a great lesson. And it's a quick read. It's a, You finish it in a couple hours. But it's called Be Our Guest, which is phenomenal. And the other book that I would recommend, it's an old one, and some of the companies that they used in there as examples are not around anymore. But if you haven't read Good to Great uh, by Jim Collins, you know, I would certainly get that book. It's, you know, about 20 years old now, maybe 15 years old, but still a fabulous book. Awesome. So that's Be Our Guest by Disney and Good to Great by Jim Collins, right? 
Yes, ma'am. Great. So those are two books that our audience can definitely use to improve on their leadership, their personal development and growth. And of course, I strongly believe if the person grows, then whatever you've learned or matured in will definitely transcend into your interactions and your behavioral skills, which will impact your business as a result. Okay, could you share with our audience what is one thing in your life that you're working on right now that you're really excited about, something that you're working on either to develop yourself or your people? Well, one of the things is I've joined a mastermind group, which, you know, in addition to the coaches, if you've not been part of a mastermind group, I strongly recommend it's more like a peer advisory group. You know, again, as an entrepreneur and business owner, you know, we're sometimes insulated from, you know, what's going on in the outside business world, or we don't have someone that we can confide in and trust in to ask business questions or ask personal questions, you know, that they're not going to, you know, use it against you or think it's silly or just not really understand the question because they haven't been in that situation. So I would strongly encourage being part of a mastermind group. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, I joined just a few months ago, a new mastermind group for accountability. It's been fantastic, but also for revenue growth and new ideas for the business. It's just been unbelievable. And if our audience is out there saying to themselves, well, I live here and how do I find a mastermind group? I mean, like, do you have any tools and suggestions as to how they could be a part of a mastermind group? Well, you can certainly search online. You can just Google, you know, mastermind group or peer advisory group in your city. You know, definitely, you know, there are companies out there that actually run mastermind groups. Well, one that comes to mind is called Vistage, V-I-S-T-A-G-E. They are a peer advisory company. So you may have a Vistage group in your area, but certainly, and the other thing is, is you can always start your own. There's no magic formula. There's no, you know, secret to running one. It's literally getting, you know, a group of business owners together to be able to talk about their problems and work through them. Okay. Wow. So you don't need to have any certifications or anything to start or be a part of a mastermind group then, pretty much, right? Certainly not. Okay. Well, those are good responses. So Vance just shared with us again, just to reiterate that one thing he's working on that he's really excited about is he recently joined a mastermind group and it's been very helpful for him. He stated he is allowed to share with other business owners the challenges and, you know, the wins that they've had. And they're also able to grow together as a community. And he's also shared that you can just Google mastermind groups or you can start your own. And he shared with us the name of a mastermind group called a company that facilitates that called Vistage, V-I-S-T-A-G-E. And I'm assuming you can just Google them as well. And they're also referred to as a peer yeah. advisory company. Did I cover mm -hmm. all of yes. that correctly? You got it very well. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Okay. So can you tell our listeners where they can find you online? Because I'm sure they're going to want to reconnect with you after this interview. <laughs> sure. The best place is on my website, which is DeliverServiceNow.com. That's DeliverServiceNow.com. And there's a, a couple of ways to contact me through contact form or through fax. I still use a fax machine. Yeah, I still use a fax machine. You know, it, it's one of my filters. If people really, truly want to communicate, with me. They can send me an e-fax, you know, they can go online and, you know, type up an e-fax and send it to me. But uh, I still have a real fax machine because I hate using the scanner on my computer. So that works. But uh, yeah, deliverservicenow.com is the best way to get in touch with me. Okay. Do you have any social media handles like Facebook or Twitter? If you go to Facebook, Deliver Service Now on Facebook, and my LinkedIn profile is under Vance Morris. Okay, so that's Deliver Service Now on Facebook, and you can check him through his website, DeliverServiceNow.com, and you can connect with him through his contact us page, as he indicated, or you can send him an e-fax through his website, correct? Yep. And you can also search for him on LinkedIn, which you can find him as Vance Morris. That's V-A-N-C-E-M-O-R-R-I-S. So if you guys want to reach out and connect with Vance, because his interview was just so amazing. He shared such great insight with us in terms of his Disney experience. What are the four service standards for Disney? Safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. He says Disney focuses on being aggressively friendly. I love that coin term. So amazing. He spoke to us about what are some of the things that he took away from Disney into his own business, which included attention to detail, service standards, and processes, which are so important. 
And he shared with us some great books that has helped him over the years to be such a wonderful individual and, and a great business leader. And that's Be Our Guest by Disney and Good to Great by Jim Collins. So if you want to reach out to Vance outside of this interview, again, you can reach out to him through his website, deliverservicenow.com. Or you can reach out to him through LinkedIn at Vance Morris. So Vance, again, I would love to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to share with us all of this great information. Before we wrap up finally with our guests, we always like to ask them, what is one quote or saying that they kind of go by when things maybe start to become a little rough or, you know, the road gets a little chambled and they say, you know, when they think of this quote or this saying, it kind of re-energizes them and gets them back on track. Sure. I will be better tomorrow than I was today. Wow, that's powerful. I will be better tomorrow than I was today. And you kind of just chant that to yourself over and over. It will go through my mind a hundred times and it goes through my mind every day because we, as an entrepreneur, you know, we hit roadblocks and hiccups, you know, quite frequently. Yeah, that is so true. Awesome. So guys, that's one thing that you can take away. I will be better tomorrow than I was today. And if you keep telling yourself stuff like that, surrounding yourself with positive minded individuals, reading, feeding your mind with positive content like Be Our Guest and Good to Great. And of course, listening to great podcasts like Navigating the Customer Experience with awesome guests like Vance Morris, your road to success can only be positive and enlightening. Again, so thank you so much, Vance. Thank you, Yanni. I appreciate you having me on. This was fantastic. I really appreciate it too. So guys, just encouraging you, if you really like this interview and if you really like our podcast, to subscribe and rate and review our podcast on iTunes, where podcast is also available on Stitcher Radio and SoundCloud for those Android users out there. And you can also access the podcast through our website at yannickgrant.com. All our episodes are there. You can listen to them directly from the website. And the episodes are also transcribed in terms of what has actually been discussed with our host, that's me, and our guest each week. So we have a new episode that comes out every Tuesday. So please, you know, download the app so that they can provide you with the necessary reminders so you can see when the episodes come out. And of course, if you want to reach out to the guests, their contact information is already transcribed in the episode notes. And you can also reach out to us through our website as well if you want further information. So thank you again. And please tune in for our next episode of Navigating the Customer Experience. We really appreciate your support of this podcast. If you want to grow your business even more or improve your leadership skills or train your team members in the art of customer service with skills such as empowerment, speed, identifying and understanding customer needs, handling your customer complaints, and also learning more about your customer lifetime value through our customer retention value calculator, please visit our website at yannickgrant.com or give us a call at 305 848 0815 or send us an email at yannick at navigating the customer experience.com. We also provide our clients with extensive research data about what really happens in their business and how their customers actually feel through our mystery shopping and customer satisfaction surveys. We will visit the branches, we test through telephone calls and email correspondence, and we provide you with a full report filled with graphs and data that can be used as strategies to improve your customer experience and net promoter score. We are here to help you and be your partner for change. Please head on over to Facebook and come join in on our Facebook group, Navigating the Customer Experience Community where all our past guests and subscribers hang out and share insightful information on customer experience, personal development, business growth, customer journey mapping, technology, and so much more. Remember to tune in weekly through your podcast app if you are an Apple user, Stitcher Radio, or SoundCloud for Android users, and you can also listen directly from our website, yannickgrant.com. Please feel free to share with your friends and family. Thanks for listening. For more awesome resources to take your customer service game to another level, head over to navigatingthecustomerexperience.com. See you next time.